First Talk, local guests, local news, local sports. WHKY Talk Radio, 1290 AM and 102.3 FM. Good morning. You're listening to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. Joining us this morning, Mandy pitts Hildebrand, Chief Executive Officer of the Hickory Metro Convention Center. And tour- uh, help me exactly with the with the exact title, if you would, please. I know it's always quite a mouthful. Um, Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Visitors Bureau. Visitors Bureau. Very good. Right. Now, lots of updates. You were here um, on April 1st, of course, with an overview and then you were here in May to talk about Tourism Week. So let's get started. And help me, because I sometimes need a refresher every now and then, uh, remind us who you are and what you do as far as the Tourism Development Authority, Convention Center, all that going on. Tell us about it. Well, thank you, Hal. And I think that's always a good way to start off. Or we're officially um, the Tourism Development Authority. We actually do business as the Hickory Metro Convention Center and... The Visitors Bureau. So that's sometimes where I hear the TDA, the Tourism Visitors, Development Authority. Right? Yes, the Tourism Development Authority. And really, so that means, unlike a lot of other organizations across the state, we operate, own and operate the Convention Center, as well as we are the tourism arm for the county. Okay. We say Hickory Metro. Visitors don't see county lines, city lines. As long as we can get them here, right. and we say the Metro, I mean, because Hickory really is in four different counties as well. So we're all about bringing visitors here, and so that's one of our has, obviously, and that pairs well with our Convention Center. So it's, it's both, it's like having a fire department and a police department. They're both extremely important, and they work together, but they have different responsibilities. Gotcha. So it's a tourism department uh, development authority does business as the Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Hickory Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau overseeing the Hickory Metro Convention Center and of course destination marketing organization for the county and all the, the surrounding areas. Get them here. Get them here. That's what we want to do. You you updated your mission. We did. Uh, vision last fall. So tell me a little bit about that. Thank you. So Every, it's probably good every decade to 15 years to update your mission and vision. So if you're still still your same mission and vision, which I understand the consistency of it, but we've been growing a lot. So you got to, you know, very one thing constant is change. And so our board took a deep dive into who we are and who we want to be in the next 10 to 15 That's years. That's a really good idea. That Every 10 to 15 years, maybe re restructure that it can in, in a different way of looking at it. That's I mean, good. cause the life's changed. Sure I mean, is. I remember when I started out in this business, there were three ways to communicate with people. And now there's like, I don't dozens. know, dozens. And so how things change. And so really, and I want you really to think about this and thank you for asking me about it, but really the mission of the Hickory Conover tourism development authority is to market and enhance the economy of the Hickory Metro by promoting a dynamic destination with sports conventions, events, and leisure travel. So think about that again. So if you think about... That's what, the mission. That's the mission. And then the vision. So basically, what to recap that, we want our region to be recognized as a top-tier meeting, sports, and leisure destination. Hickory has not been on... I mean, we are, we've been on the radar, and we've been doing great for decades. Right. We are taking off right now. Um, And that's a lot of partnerships and everybody kind of helping and doing what they're supposed to do in their lane to bring in our lane is really to bring people here. But we are fortunate because of all the progress that's happening within our county and our community that gives us something more to promote. And a lot of the private public partnership like today, you know, we're at 10 o'clock. There's the aviation walk ribbon cutting. That's wonderful for residents. But I'm going to tell you what. That will bring visitors, and I have a story to tell you about that later on in the hour if we have time. But really, so our goal is to promote all the assets we have in our community. So tell me a little bit about the strategic plan. It's got, uh, I, I know that it has a, a uh, what you may call a broad scope. It and, does. And give, me, give me a little bit of the history, too, because you, this came about, what, in the 90s? Is that okay, right? that's great, too. A good reminder, because a lot of people ask me that, too. And we promote the entire area. So what happened in the 80s? Um, There were two cities within our county that had hotels, and those were Hickory and Conover, and there was a vision 
from many people. I mean, Bruce Eckert, who's our chairman now, was part of that vision. Um, Rick Beasley, who's the assistant city manager of Hickory right. now. He used to be in Conover. We've got Mr. Um, Lynn and Leroy Lale were both a part of that. Many people, Phil Yunt, the list goes on and on. But the thought was we need a convention center to bring people to our area. Okay. Um, because, of course, tourism is economic development. Sure. And that thought, so both the citizens of Hickory and Conover voted to allow an occupancy tax okay. to be collected by visitors who stay in the hotels. Good deal. Okay, gotcha. And so gotcha. all that money, uh, or that money over years, was saved to help pay for the original convention center that was built in 1997. I did not know that. Right. 1997. Okay, yes, that's very when good. that one opened. The the we started collecting so you start occupancy tax. money. In the late 80s, late I think 80s, it's 86, all that money 87. To it does. And then you got either a down payment or enough money to do the project. Right, and we just keep borrowing money. So we, we keep expanding, obviously, and we'll talk about that as well. So that's how that started. That doesn't mean people get confused. Well, why aren't all the cities in there? Well, these are the two cities that collect the occupancy tax that help us pay for you know, two thirds of our occupancy tax goes to build, to pay the debt of the convention center. One third goes toward marketing staffing. And again, that's getting a little bit into the weeds, but that's, that's okay, the, right? That's the governmental structure of it. Um, but we promote with our destination marketing hat. We promote the entire county. Sure, you do, right? And and that's and, but our governing board are those that um, you know collect the tax and the cities that collect the tax and the city councils have appointees. Hickory City Council has appointee. Um, Conovers have appointees or city managers are on there. I'm trying to think if there are any other hotels in any other counties now that has that residency tax, and I don't know. Right. I, I know that there's, of course. There's a few, and it's growing. And that, and that's, right. you know, you think about ten, five, ten 5, 10 years from now, um, the board's going to have to reassess that, too, is because we Airbnb, right, right, right. all, yeah, that's Verbo, what I was ask. all yeah. of that collected. And, and if, again, this year, actually, I'm waiting to get the numbers from June, but we will probably finish the year close to $2.4 million in occupancy tax. $2.4 million in occupancy but tax? But you got to think, that's, that sounds like it is a lot, and it's it grown like tremendously. Lot, yeah. But we've got a big building I'm going to tell you about in one segment a little bit more. And if, those haven't, if people haven't seen it yet, they're going to see um, the uh, – Improvements and a lot of that funds go that Well, you plus. already had your first meeting because I got the press release on we that. We did. All we right, did. more First Talk, Mandy Pitts Hildebrand uh, this morning. The TDA does business as the Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Hickory Metro Convention Center and Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, oversee the Hickory Metro Convention Center and Destination Marketing Organization for the county. More First Talk right after this. Good morning. You're listening to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. Mandy Pitt Hildebrand, our guest this morning, Hickory Metro Convention Center uh, Visitors Bureau. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, and all the great things of bringing people into the area, uh, finding out a little bit about the history. This is all good stuff. But I want to hear about what's going on today with the expansion, with the renovation. Uh, you've got Bear, you brought me a picture, a picture of Barry the Bear. Please yes, he visited us last bear time. With us. He's yes. a little tired this morning. So, Is you know, he? we didn't bring him in today. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. But yes, thank you. Can you believe it's been actually August first, it'll be sixteen months since the groundbreaking. No, I cannot. <laughs> sixteen months. Because we knew about it before. Yes. The groundbreaking. So we've been talking about this. That's spooky. We've been talking about this a long time. This is scary. We have. And this, it's been, oh gosh, it's just been so fun to watch the development and all the different things that are happening. And this last 10% stretch, that's the toughest. It's like getting all the different kinks out, doing different things. But everything so far has been so successful. Actually, as we're sitting here right now, I just got a text from Ed Gudat, our facilities manager, and they're pouring cement in the front today at the convention center where the main entrance is um, because we have a really big event coming up starting tomorrow, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. The uh, Please bear with us. I just thought of something. We had a guest in the other day who was talking about, and, and I can't remember, it's not Hickory Trade Shows, but it's a, it was a... Hickory Mart. Hickory Mart. No, no, it's Hickory Shows. Hickory, Hickory Shows. Hickory Shows had a show there. 
And they were using the brand new entrance, I believe. Or putting they people were. over to the brand new entrance. They were kind of excited about that. But I bring that up. To see Hickory Shows, Crafted Trade Show, or something like it was that. Simply crafted. crafted. Yes, I saw a lot of your WHKY crew crafted. there. Simply Crafted. Thank you very On much. On Saturday, I saw many of your folks. And they had this wonderful event that was very successful. You're pouring concrete today, but you'd never know it. You all did a great job of keeping everything open and operating and working, even though you were you were doing this construction. Exactly. Um, Kate Dillon was her name. Oh, yes. Kate. Oh, yes. Thank you, Vince. Vince brought that in for me. She Kate and her, and her brother, brother, Jimmy. Right. They have, they have done a wonderful job. That Simply Crafted show was top-notch vendors, um, beautiful setup. Yes. Um, they're doing, you know, a couple more shows, and they brought in a Christmas show last year. And I know I've, I heard them both on, on WHKY talk, and I've heard the But they, they said that they were able to go in and do this show. So even though you've been doing this renovation, and it's a big renovation, mm -hmm. you're still c continuing exactly business right. day in and day out. So just to remind people with us, and we're adding a little bit more than 46,000 square feet um, to the convention center, and 35,000 square feet of that space can be an expo or sports venue. It has 30-foot ceilings, so one of the first events, actually the first event booked for that space with a cheerleading event, which I think I mentioned in April, because um, I think that's where it was pretty much confirmed, and they'll be here in March, okay. and they're, they're coming here from another place in North Carolina, but they are interested in coming to Hickory to have their cheer event. Um, so we're excited to have that group here. Um, but that space also can be basketball, volleyball, pickleball. We haven't striped the courts yet. We're going to have to wait to the end of I August. I thought this was interesting. You gave me some uh, information before we came on the air today. So you're going to strip the floors, mm -hmm. and then you've got a, a waiting time that they have to breathe. Yes, they do. I mean, I've learned so much about wooden floors, yeah, the, I can't the, even the, tell you. The and, floor's got to breathe. And you can't breathe. have humidity, and they've got to have air conditioning, and they've got to can't get too cold. And so, and this is one that, and that's just taking. Did I ever it. think I would learn about that? No, but now I just feel like a mini expert on and it. And that's taking the sealant off. That's not before you even start to seal it back. Right. This is just after you strip it. You got to have forty-five days for it to breathe in all these wonderful conditions you're just talking about. Right. So basically, before you can cover it, because our our goal is really, I th and we have a lot of interest in that space expo space it can be uh, actually that's where the gym and mineral show is going to be in okay. october but on that wooden floor we will cover it but after you know said once we when we cover it that's when we'll have the expos in there trade shows um, i know some of our big trade shows will be using that space sure. um, for their vendors it's like a hockey rink you yeah. cover the ice it's like other you know, during the way there could be a concert in there there could, the hardwood you cover the hardwood right yeah sure right and then at a push of a button all the goals go up in the air Right. So it's really top notch, and so the first the first group that's going to use that is um, this week tomorrow or the, later this week. It's going to be a spot for the association of the county directors of social services. They they are our first really? full event that's going to be taking up every space of the convention center. So that's the first full event using every bit of the space. Gotcha. Um, that's coming up this week. But as we're skipping no, around, I didn't I'm mean sorry. to get I didn't mean to get off topic there. But really, if you go, that's me. I think, I'm sorry. well, no, it, it, it's great. It's great questions and great information. Really, we have done a major, and I know I've talked about it several times, and you have very loyal listeners, so they've heard me again. But if there's a new person out there listening, I encourage you to go to visit hickorymetro.com, and then you click on renovations in addition. But really, this we are 16 months in. We are almost complete um, today. Literally, now, they're pouring concrete right in the front for the main entrance. Now, is there? Do you know of any like little place off to the side that you can tell me off the air? <laughs> that I can go and put my initials in and a little stick because I'm on the city walk. Yeah, people would never see it. Yeah, well, you better hurry it up because it's going to jail real soon. So oh, you're gonna have to run over there after here. Yeah, the the, the mayor would freak out yeah, if he knew I have my little see. initials oh, there in the city goodness. walk somewhere. Oh, but I'm on there. I'm sure he's listening right now. And he's so, gonna go look for it. And, and, but yeah, but so you tell but me right, a little so place really, that I could do that. Yeah. So we've got. So really, we have done so much. Um, and really, you know, we said we borrowed 14. Well. Uh, we work with our partners. We've, we've borrowed $14 million, but then we've put an additional $4 million. So that's really about an $18 million renovation and expansion. So when you were saying that 2.8 that you got from? 2.4, yeah. 2.4, but you said we got a big building that we're working on. We I'm do. guessing part of that came from the four? Yes, four we've million? had our fund balance, and we've, we've been doing that 
over the past couple right. years, but also the, all that money, uh, some, that money has to go to marketing and as well too. So we've got event revenue, a re- event revenue and occupancy tax pays for staffing and you know, our debt and operations for the convention. So center. even though you've got the full big event coming up, that's going to take all the uh, county public health. Uh, you've only got the other two <coughs> items. And then the project's complete when you do the floor and you do right. the front. So that the you're two doing things, today. the floor. And then one thing that's going to take some time is um, the covered walkway. So when you look, if those of you that have been to the convention center, which I imagine most of you, um, well, I would think many of the listeners probably have been there. Do you by think there. that everybody in our area has been to the convention center at least once? Not everybody. Really? I, I would hope like 75% of you us think would so? have. I, that's just a guess off the top of my head. But um, the. I would think so because some people. Do you remember this? Oh, I know you're going to show. They were at Hickory yes. Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau right there. John Reap. Yeah. Was there, and that's of yes. course that's one of the ones that I would think that a lot of people maybe he would not have been to a right, show. Right, and that's when he had just won the last comic standing. Yep. Yes. So I do remember that because I, I was, you know, working with the city of Hickory and Mayor Wright and I worked on putting that together, worked with our friends at the convention center to put that on. But so the convention center, we do have a lot of additions. And again, everything for renovating the carpet. We have invested um, a lot into our new display screens, our audio, visual, everything is top notch. Our the We're going to have a, hopefully a ribbon cutting later this fall. Which later this fall. Okay. I know WHKY has got to be there and I'll give y'all a sneak. Y'all come by anytime. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, we want to enjoy, um, we want to, we'll invite the community to that as well. But okay. hopefully it'll be the fall and when we get back, I'll tell you the last couple things we have left to finish up this project. Okay, very much. Very good. Uh, Mandy Pitts joins us this morning. Mandy Pitts, Hildebrand, uh, Chief Executive Offer, Officer, CEO of your Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Hickory Visitors Bureau. More First Talk right after this. Good morning. You're listening to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. Mandy Pitts Hildebrand joins us this morning. CEO, Tourism Development Authority, does business as the Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Hickory Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, bringing people into the area. Expansion, big time with the convention center. And I know you're really excited, but you keep uh, uh, telling me, you, you, know, you got to get over there because it looks just so beautiful. And it's so different from, from the way that it was. And you're very excited about all the different groups and organizations that we're going to bring in. And I think that maybe people don't realize what a big part of our community this really is. If they haven't gone maybe to a trade show or uh, the, the recent uh, the Hickory. Simply Crafted. Simply Crafted. If they haven't been to that, the Christmas show that was there. I've been there. I know that uh, some of our clients, they use the Hickory Metro Convention Center because it is a great. But it's also for a big area. When you think about the convention center, how many venues do we have of this size? Well, in this part of the state. So it is a big, big deal. It is and, big the, deal. and this renovation is a big deal. So let's talk a little bit about you. There's a couple things yeah. that we, we <clears> left <throat> off that have not been completed. And I want to hear about some of the folks who are coming. Right. So basically, um, but we're, we're our most complete. We do have some right. things to do. We said we're pouring concrete, concrete right now. Right. But there is, it's not all going to be complete because we do have a covered walkway that's going to connect the main entrance right. to the parking deck. Okay. So um, That's part of it. Park, is there not one there now? I don't think there is. There's not one there. Okay. And there's, of course, some delays with getting some pieces. So that may be the fall. Okay. Um, but we do. Um, our, our goal is to get everything wrapped up by the 
late summer, early okay. fall, and we do plan to have a ribbon cutting right. um, to really want the community to come see it. Our meeting planners, those who use our space, I, I feel like we'll have people from across the state come see it at the ribbon cutting. It's all about relationships, too. We're successful because of the customer service my team provides, and we care for every customer that comes into our building. We want it to be their building, their home for a few days and, and for a week, or they come several times a year. It's really important, and I think that's a really big deal. And so it'll be a big event, and, of course, WHKY must be there. I did not think about that, but, yes, if somebody's doing a show there and they're promoting their goods and services, they want to be able to do that in the very best way they can with the proper lighting, with the proper audio visual. They want top of the line, a top of the line experience, top drawer. And that's what the Metro Center is going to be it able is. to deliver because of the expansion. And it's an investment, but it will it will pay itself back because our job is to fill the hotel rooms. And we do have two more that are being under construction right now in the neighborhood. There'll probably be more in the future. Um, our goal is to fill those hotel rooms, whether it's leisure or business travelers or people at, at sporting events or convention center events. That is our role as we all work together. But we do, I just want to mention a couple things since, so we will, that will be our big ribbon cutting with a lot of different things. And we have some other things rolling out at the convention center in the future too. We'll see how those all play out. But we did dedicate on June 25th, when you come into the main entrance of the convention center, Lynn and Leroy Lane, named after Lynn Lynn Lale and uh, the late uh, Leroy Lale. Their vision years ago, the Convention Center, working with governmental partners to make that happen, and we couldn't think of any, anything more appropriate than that because at different times over three decades, both Lynn and Leroy have served on the Tourism Board, and naming that was very apropos, uh, I, I think. Agree. And I so, But we, um, just such a giving family, so when you, when you, when we drive in the main entrance, that is their name there. And then also, last was it last oh, July seventeenth, the Economic Development Corporation, Catawba County, they have an annual meeting. With a lot of their businesses as well as governmental leaders held that meeting in the new renovated Catawba space with the lower ceilings. Now, so is that, that the one I got the press release? That on? is, and that okay. was the first meeting to be in that space. Which Bruce Eckert, who I mentioned before, our chair said it very well, tourism is economic development, so it makes sense for the first event to be the EDC, EDC. annual meeting. Now, help me with this. You've got the big, tall parts for the volleyball, for the cheerleading, basketball, things like that that need that additional. But you also have an area that's a lower ceiling that gives it more the feel of a boardroom, office, so you have a variety of different we spaces there We have such a offer. variety. As a matter of fact, yesterday, um, the um, – B.B. Leach, who yeah. I, I was able to follow in her footsteps, which wasn't easy, it's not easy to do, um, but I, she came to visit yesterday, and she was just, she couldn't believe it. She goes, you have something for everyone. The smaller ceilings, smaller rooms for smaller meetings, and then our new renovated Catawba space does have lower ceilings, but it's a very upscale ballroom feel to it. Nice. And um, it's going to be exciting to see tomorrow about lunchtime, about 1,100 people from the North Carolina Social Services, um, uh, the leaders of all those are going to be in that space listening, and that's the first big event there. Um, so it's going to be exciting just to see that happen tomorrow. That'll be great. I know that you'll be excited about that. It so, is. So many I think we all are. Your staff, right? and, and yes, and there's so and many different me. things. Like well, this is new for us too. We're going to co we continue to have the events that we have. We're going to be able to bring other groups as well mentioned um, uh, Sarah Jones, who is our, serves as our director of sales and marketing. She goes to a lot of different trade shows across the country. Sports is a big one. She's actually vice president of the North Carolina Sports Association. She's been talking really? to other groups to bring people here um, to use that space. And so we're interested to see that. And then we've got um, Amber Howard, director of events, Kendall Warren. We've got a lot of team. If I start remember, everybody's so important on our team. They've been talking to existing customers that we have, and let's see how we can make your show bigger. Okay, well, let's pair this show with this show. So we're going to have multiple events at the convention center, which we have done before, um, but these may be a little bit bigger. And so it's going to be actually a pretty exciting, I think, next 24 months, the next two years, just to see all the different shows we may get or how we expand shows or what we have room for. I mean, what's most important? What's going to make the biggest impact on our community as far as staying in hotels to renting the convention center space? They go out to dinner. They go get gas. They go shopping. Right. All of that makes a big important. We don't have, and actually the next time I'm on, we'll have some numbers with those tourism dollars. But the last numbers we have, it's, it's $333 million that visitors bring to our 
county um, each year. And that was the last year was 2022. So I hope to find out about 2023 soon. So that is all, that's why it's important. You said people sometimes maybe not understand the importance. And maybe for many years, I didn't either. But serving in this role for nine years, I see the importance it is. I mean, I see the economic impact it's making, not only on Hickory and Catawba County, but the entire region, because there is no place like the Hickory Metro Convention Center on this side of the state on one level. And especially we have you just got to come see us. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't think of an event space that in this area, in this part of the state, where you have more options, where you have, and you can go out and talk to people about this, bring them here. They get to see our city. They have to, they get to dine out. They get to see the city. They get to see, hopefully, City Walk, Aviation Walk happening later today. All the different parts of it. They say, wow, this is, we got a lot going on here in Hickory. More first talk with Mandy Pitts Hildebrand right after this. You're listening to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. Mandy Pitts Hildebrand joins us this morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I've been, been... Throwing, I've been throwing you a lot of curveballs this morning. I, I know. know. You got to listen to Jeff Clyde. You saw him out walking this morning with his lovely bride. It was like, watch out for that Hal Rowe. He'll throw you some curveballs. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm asking him for some softballs, but they've been all curveballs. All but... curveballs this morning. Uh, I'm so proud of you and of our area for the development of and the refurbishing of the uh, Hickory Metro Convention right. Center. I know that it's the Visitors Bureau as well. Right. But what's going on there? Uh, don't get me wrong. BB Leach did a wonderful job. You've filled those shoes. You've picked up the ball. You've carried it. And you're doing a great job with everything that is happening that continues to progress. Well, that's perfect Hickory, to say when we're getting ready for football season, Hickory right? Metro picked up the Convention. ball. There you go. So there, I threw you a curveball. There so, but really, yes, we curve. have stayed really busy. I mean, even though we were, you know, halfway open this past year, we had 179 events, and the year before, when we were fully open, we had 185 events. So our team has not stopped, and we're doing great. But really, to check out our events, we are we stay busy, and our public events are on our calendar. Sometimes people are like, "I never see anything on the convention center calendar." Well, if it's a private event or if it's a well I say private or if it's an association meeting the general public's not going to come cattlemen have been here and uh, that's not something that normally would here. be open to the public right exactly so we we do stay busy and and you know all the public shows and different things are on our marquee and um so we do that but just if we could so that is really really important um but the other hat we were talking about earlier is our role in bringing visitors here in the marketing part which I really think is one of the reasons that I was able to uh, to get this position is because that's one thing I love our community. I love marketing, bringing people here, talking about all the things there are to do. Um, we do that to on an outside level, like a lot of the things that we are doing, people don't see because we're trying to bring people across the southeast to here, and I to t to be our visitors, to come to sporting events, to come to meetings, to go visit. Um, the Bunker Hill Bridge to come, you know, enjoy. I mean, this morning one of our tourism partners has opened up a new restaurant, um, uh, Main Chick, Main Chick Jammin', the biscuit place. I mean, people to come here to eat, people to come here to sporting events, people to come here um, to steal furniture shop, people to still come here to do that. And then what? There's so much more to do. You could come here just because you want to come here. You can kayak, you can walk on the walks, you can mountain bike. I mean, yesterday I'm talking with the county manager, Mary Furtado. I mean, those parks um, that, that Catawba County have put together, all the parks, and now they have their own department. It's wonderful for residents, but my goodness, visitors like it too, whether they're day visitors or overnight visitors. And so I think we are in a role that we've never been in before. Does that make sense? So really how important it is to keep up with our tourism partners so we can tell the story to people that don't live here, get them to come to our community. And that's kind of saying it the most simple way I can try to say it is, um, but really we we do have a lot of positive things going. We have a lot of travel riders now. We just really appreciate WHKY. You know, I generally say that every time, and 
we have um, travel writers that are from across the southeast that sometimes we bring in and they're telling story to people that we've never met before and that's a good way another media service that a lot of people don't see um, we're getting better at that we're getting better at telling our story that was a big thing i've been here for a couple of years and that was a thing that i heard early on is we're not telling our story very well. We're not letting people know about how great things are. I think we're getting better at that. We are, and you tell the good story, too. You have the guest on here, and, and I know that's telling our story, and that's what we've got to keep but doing. But, yeah, but you're talking about, like, the southeast right. and the north, and, and outside of this area. Right. We've got to tell telling our story. that story. Right. And we're doing that, and it's not just us. It's a, it's a lot of people, yeah. but we're, we're part of that process, too, and it's all about teamwork. And really, and one thing I do want to mention is hospi- I was mentioning all of our tourism partners. There's a whole lot of them, from hoteliers to yeah. attractions to restaurants and more, sporting events. We need more hospitality employees. Um, I know Do- Dean Mueller's been on here before with CVCC, and another hospitality academy is coming up soon. Right. And so um, that is – be on the lookout for that with CVCC. And that is giving people an overview of what hospitality and tourism is all about and gives you opportunities to – tour hotels, go to some restaurants, go to some attractions and learn about the importance of customer service and get some certifications because someone could walk in and go through that hospitality academy and then have a job um, easily wherever they wanted to go. Hospitality can take you a lot of places. We hope they'll stay right here. Now, we just had a big baseball tournament this past weekend, all kinds of stuff. Now, it's for the people here in our area. We talk about bringing folks in from different areas and having different trade associations, but if you are a member of a trade organization, if you're a member of, contact Mandy. Just or contact Andy. me, and I'll get you in touch. You can go look at our website, visit hickorymetro.com. You can find our event Any organization. Staff. And, but if any organization, um, you're welcome. We'd love. And also, uh, tonight I'm talking to the Kiwanis Club. They want to oh, learn yeah. more about the Hickory Metro Convention Center and the Visitors Bureau, so I'm meeting with that. So if you're a part of an organization and you want to hear about what we do and how we p- we play a role in our whole um, community, I'm happy to come talk about something I love, and it's the importance of I don't know tourism. if the Kiwanis have an annual meeting or not, but well, you're over there. I need to talk to them. They need to have their North Carolina meeting here. They We've sure got, do. Get exactly it scheduled right. for a year or so out because I know they probably got plans for next year, but schedule on out. You've got yes. room on the calendar? We do. We'll make room. There you go. I'm, I'm just wondering. i got to say we got to say goodbye here, but What's the one that you've got? What's the furthest date out on your calendar now, would you say? Just off the top of your head, three, four, five years? Yes, probably. Oh, 2028. I mean, I think. Um, okay, gotcha. Yes, we've, That's we've, on the calendar. It is. That's going to be happening. So make those plans now. Andy Pitts, Hellebrand, as always, a pleasure to see you. Congratulations see on you. a job well done. Look forward to it all getting wrapped up. Having the cheerleaders in for the first big event coming up in March. We want to thank you very much for joining us today. And all you do day in and day out. Right now, we're going to ch- talk with uh, Chuck Boozer, host of On Second Thought with Chuck Boozer. I know he and, and his producer, Garrett, have been working hard to put together a great show for you today. Chuck, what will we hear on Second Thought with Chuck Boozer? Tell us about your show, if you would, please, sir. Oh, thank you, Hal. Good morning, everybody here. Carol Howell joined us. Uh, she has a, a blog called Let's Talk Dementia, and we just a uh, continuing series talking about dementia and Alzheimer's here. Aaron from uh, Dry Otter will visit with us in the 10 o'clock hour, and Ashley Barnett from the Catawba Science Center will come around in the 11 o'clock hour. It's Tuesday on Second Thought with me, Chuck Boozer, here on WHKY. Back to you, Hal. Chuck, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close the way we normally do, Monday through Thursday, with the greatest song in the world for the greatest nation in the world. Back when I was younger, back when dinosaurs ruled the earth, and the uh, stations would sign off for their broadcast day, or they'd come on for the broadcast day, they would always start the day with a national anthem and end the day with a national anthem. That's something that I think is important, and I, I think it's one of those things that we have done for a number of years and would like to continue doing. Same thing with Schubert Federal Credit Union. They said, hey, we like that idea. Let's start the day. One of the best ways to start it is with the National Anthem. We'd like to be a part of that. Schubert Federal Credit Union, thank you for your sponsorship of starting our day right with our National Anthem.
Thanks so much for joining us on First Talk. We know you have a choice in morning radio. That's why we appreciate you choosing the First Talk radio program. Be grateful for what you got. Make it a great day. We'll talk tomorrow on First Talk with Hal Rowe right here on WHKY Talk Radio with the Greater Hickory Metro, 1290 AM, 102.3 FM, streaming live at WHKY.com.